Hello and welcome to another A to Plin Philosopher video with myself, Jonathan M. S. Pierce. Uh, today I'll give you a walk through the front line for 24th of October 2022. General news is that uh, the Russians have hit Mykolaiv, Zaporizhia, Nikopol, which is an important sort of mining town. I think mean, they deal with manganese uh, and other ores there. And um, uh, is it... Uh, Mahanets as well. So the uh, Zaporizhia, Nikopol, Man uh, Manaretz and Mikolev have been hit by uh, S300, so your surface-to-air missiles that can be used in the secondary mode to hit ground targets, but also Shahid drones. We know that Iranians are operating in Kherson, Crimea and Belarus uh, to support the use of those drones. We also know that Belarus has, has been continuing to ship a bunch of munitions out of Belarus and into Russia and round through to Donetsk. In fact, you can. Uh, there's been open source intelligence to map exactly where that is on the rail, railroads um, in almost in real time. Uh, so there are, there are lots of video there is lots of video footage of those munitions, those tanks, but other other pieces of mechanized, um, uh, you know, equipment. So that that's that. Uh, artillery fire being swapped along the the northern border. But let's get to our first port of call, which is uh, the Kupiansk to Svatovsk to Kremlin front line here. Um, one that has taken up a lot of a lot of time over the last few few weeks, but has also stalled somewhat. And there is some criticism of the Ukrainians for losing the momentum and taking an operational pause here. But of course, they'll be doing that for a reason. Uh, but will it be worth it, given that they've given time for the Russians to build defences? Anyway, that all that kind of stuff I've talked about before. Right, we're going to go to the northern uh, part of this front line and just to the northeast of Kupiansk. So uh, let's give you the, the general topolo uh, topological Google Maps, uh, topographical, uh, I need to think about that, uh, could be down to Svatoe, uh, the highway that connects those two towns. And we're going to just concentrate on this northeastern part here. So they've been fighting over Vilshana and uh, Persho Trav Nevi. Um, but there was, so this is where we're going to here. Um, this is Kupiansk down to Svatove, and we're going to focus in on this part here. So this is Vilshana and Persia Travnevi. Vilshana here, Persia Travnevi there. Uh, Liman Pershi and the Tavilzhanka. So what happened the other day is the Russians took control of Horobivka and the Ukrainians have been defending, so I think sending in some um, reinforcements to defend this area, but they've also been digging in around Liman Pershi and in this sort of agricultural area here, uh, south of Vilshana, they've been making earthworks and, and digging themselves into defensively around this area to shore up these defences, to make sure that a counterattack from the Russians doesn't, you know, allow the Russians to then encircle uh, Kupiansk and for them to lose Kupiansk. Okay, so there's a threat that the Russians could come around this way. So they are building up these defences around here, whilst also still pushing towards uh, Svatove, uh, Oliansky, um, uh, and uh, Ivanivka are areas where they're still sort of pushing. Um, so if we come further down south, past Svatove itself, uh, and they are only sort of 12, 15 kilometres away from Svatove, uh, which which means that, you know, they can hit with artillery. Um but the, it's all about Makivka at the moment. So we further down south of Svatove, we have the P66 highway, the Krasna River, which has some towns along the Krasna River, and the Kherovets River, which has some towns along the Kherovets. Okay, there have been uh, some re repelling of attacks from the Russians around Raharodka. Um, but if we go down to Makivka, uh, there have been claims that the Ukrainians have done some counters in Makivka and even, well, uh, okay, so there have been claims that, oops, don't want to do that, do I? Um, for those who are just listening to this, I've just turned the map around uh, <laughs> so it's not north to south. Anyway, uh, Makivka, there, are some, there have been some attacks from Makivka, but also some geolocated hitting of Russian columns the, to the southwest of Makivka. So it, it's a bit confusing as to what's going on. I have been saying for the last week that basically this is one big grey zone down here. 
um, with the claims of the Russians attacking towards Terny and Yampolivka, but the 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 um, Ukrainians uh, also counterattacking back eastwards. Now there have been some claims of, of fighting around uh, Chervonopopivka and uh, Zhitlivka. Okay, so well, that's that's crazy because that's all the way over here by the highway. But then there have been confirmation that the Russians have now taken Nevsky. So, so essentially, this is what this is what it kind of looks like. If 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 we t if we were to sort of believe that wholly, now I do think that the Russians have taken Nevsky. Uh, so I am going to give Russians control of that. So here we are. Let's get in. So I think that is probably what it what it looks like there is confirmation from i think the ukrainians that, that the russians now have nevsky uh so there you go but then on on the flip side what we could do and i'll i'll just do this to to show you um it it looks like the ukrainians are challenging Cher, uh popivka and zitlivka there so we have this really confused map now. Uh, we take the Ukrainian lines back past there. Uh, who, who's to say exactly what's going on? And it, when the dust settles in a day or two, you know, I will, I will adapt. But however, I, I do think that Nevsky has been uh, lost. So here's Nevsky, Russian controlled, confirmed by both Ukrainians and Russian sources. But the AFU, so the Ukrainian forces are fighting at those two places I, I talked about. Um, and the the uh, Russian units in Kremlin are worried that they are get, getting cut off in the north. Okay, so that is uh, a bit of information uh, there. And then we're going to go a little bit south now. So uh, as we move further down south past Kremlin and Rubizhny, and again, this is all being contested around Torsky and Dubrova and Yampolivka and Zarichny. There have been uh, reports of Russian attacks out of uh, Lysychansk, westwards towards Bilirivka. Uh, but they have been repelled in Bilirivka. But there is uh, uh, quite a lot of attacks all around here uh, that the Russians are conducting. Uh, as, as this source says, Russian troops are attacking Bilirivka, uh, Luhansk region from Shipilivka, uh, sorry, Shipilivka direction. Increased missile and artillery barrages are reported. Until now, the Ukrainians have succeeded in defending the area. The whole region, Russian forces have increased their artillery attacks on a daily basis. So that is what is going on there. Okay, lots of attacks, but at the moment being repelled. So if we come further down south towards our, um, you know, oft visited map um, area of Bakhmut. Okay, so Bakhmut has seen reinforcements from the Ukrainians who uh, are pulling some troops and apparently have done some counterattacks. So the sort of thing you see around. So the, even the war mapper that has not updated their map. So I use a war mapper maps because they're quite colorful, <laughs> basically. But they've updated their maps for the first time in, a, in almost a week, I guess, to, to show that there's a slight bit. You can see a tinge of, of brighter yellow, which shows that they're, they're, that is now uh, area controlled by the Ukrainians. They are countering back out of Bakhmut, at least according to them. Tendai here says Russian troops have launched a large attack to regain lost territories in Bakhmut at the cement factory. So again, that's to say that they have lost some territory before you know trying to regain it. Uh, Solodar was also attacked. The attack failed entirely, and Russian troops had to withdraw. So this is the idea. And so the cement factory is this is this area. Some call it the asphalt factory. If, if you're of more American persuasion, it, around about here, I think that it's there which is um, has been hotly contested over the recent sort of weeks and months. Um, Bakhmut Axis, the Russian forces have been pushed back completely to the M0306 intersection. What they fought for for two months, the uh, Ukrainians, particularly through the 93rd Mechan Mechanical Brigade. So the 93rd Mechanized Brigade is uh, a decent fighting um, unit, uh, regained it in just two days. Russians tried breaking through to Klitschivka but failed. Okay, so let's just talk about that. And here's another map showing that the Ukrainians have, have hit back towards this road and the eastern suburbs of Bakhmut have apparently been cleared out. So what, what does this look like? Uh, let's go to my map here. So 
if we come in here, uh, it, it's all about pushing them back to here, to this road. And, you know, some say so Bakhmutsky and Solodar are now, you know, just, uh, well, they're being defended really quite robustly. And the, this area that the Russians had taken is now being retaken and possibly this cement factory around here is now uh, sort of contested, maybe more of a grey zone. And we've got this claim that, that, that they're pushing back here. And even Klizchivka, um, the Russians have failed to make any inroads there and, and apparently been pushed back. Some people have them pushed back right to that road there. Uh, but that certainly is, is what it looks like to me. Um, Bakhmut, you know, you could have a, a, a bit of a concentration on defending more uh, and get, throwing more troops and resources, at least from the Ukrainian's point of view, towards this Bakhmut axis. Um, it's, it's developing, and I'll let you know. So we continue down the map um, from Bakhmut um, further towards Donetsk, the city. We come to our uh, surround or attempted encirclement of Avdivka. Okay, and there's not a lot of change uh, at all going on there. So uh, there, there's still these attempts to do this sort of large scale encirclement of Avdivka. Uh, and perhaps further north, we have a little bit of movement for the Russians up here, um, and just literally meters in um, Pervomysky. Okay, but other than that, you know, not really an awful lot of change. Uh, yeah, if, if we come down south uh, a little bit further, so this is now southwest of Donetsk, the city of Donetsk. Actually, so there is quite a bit of. Um, this is the very corner of our front line. So just to take you back to the war map, map it's coming down here past um, Donetsk and uh, Avdivka, and we come to the corner. Now, it turns out that in that corner, there is really heavily defensive lines on both sides. Okay, um, The Russians and the Ukrainians have fortified their lines um, and behind their lines, lots of sort of dug in troops, both, uh, you know, east and west of these lines. But actually, the Ukrainians are apparently putting in some counterattack in a number of these places uh, around here. Mikilsky, uh, so around Mikilsky, and some reports that they've sort of moved uh, towards Stepney here and that they're in control of Stepney. Um, so around this kind of area that they that there is some counterattacking going on. Uh, it's, again, things don't change particularly quickly around here and haven't done for months. And this is because they are so w well sort of defended on both sides with quite a lot of troops. So we move um, to uh, towards the Kherson region, and it's worth noting here that there is a theory that there that. Uh, and again, some evidence that Zaporizhia, there's a buildup of Ukrainian troops in Zaporizhia, that this whole Kherson um, operation could be happening in conjunction with another counterattack, perhaps perhaps that's yet yet to take place. So coming down from Zaporizhia to, to, to Melitopol, which I think would be pretty clever. Um, if they could get that right, then the chaos that's going on around here with some kind of attempt at an operational withdrawal, but where they have their um, bridges and supply lines hit over the Dnieper River, to then also do a counterattack uh, would leave the Russians in complete disarray. And, and I think that would be pretty clever if they did do that. Whether that's going to happen, I don't know. But there, there's been these claims about amassing forces for the for the Ukrainians, uh, you know, in, in several places, Zaporizhia, towards Donetsk, and also up on the Svatove Kremlin front line. Um, as far as Kherson itself is concerned, again, it's quite difficult to find out what's going on, given that there is sort of this opera, opera, operational uh, security going on, OPSEC going on. There are different claims. Um, so here we have, uh, I talked about communications being uh, down, internet being down in Kherson. Well, the Russians have done this on purpose. So here is evidence of the cables, uh, you know, big hole being drilled and cables being cut underneath the ground there. So the, the, there is no internet and that is going to uh, 
be an advantage so so it's claimed for the russians because then you know it's very difficult to get information about what's going on with troop movements with russian troop movements out of you know out of this area of Kherson. the ukrainians aren't going to be able to be told so easily by locals and and by people on the ground that are oh, russian troops here russian troops are not here they're moving out of there because the communications have been cut uh, in the Kherson Oblast, Milove was liberated, as according to, to this source, and you hear this quite a bit. So the idea is that Milove has been liberated after the Russians fled from it to Beroslav. They learned that the Ukrainians had made a plan to besiege him while huge explosions in Novokovka due to strikes from HIMARS targeted the command posts of the Russians and ammunition too. And claims that uh, Cherivny uh, were abandoned and Milove, uh, and Ukraine's advancing to um, uh, to Beroslav. Well, you know, when you look at, say, Deep State map, that doesn't show any of that, but that doesn't surprise me. They're often sort of 20, 24 hours behind. But realistically, it, it, it's difficult. to, And it's often, you know, worth just holding on for a little bit um, until until we know exactly what's going on. But if we look at the, the map of the Kherson area, these claims would suggest that there is, um, so we've got Milove here and we've got Ducheny up there. The claim is that the Ukrainians have, you know, liberated Milove, which would be pretty impressive to have taken, you know, a big move down there. Uh, you've also got this claim that, uh, and I said yesterday, there's this uh, village of Staritsia, here that has been liberated but then also these other claims that uh Chalove and uh, other sort of villages in the area have also been liberated so that would mean the ukrainians had gone right the way down here and even possibly to down down to there now if that's the case you know that that is some you know pretty big incursions that are taking place but i'm i just don't know right it's all about getting geolocated video evidence really of these claims it wouldn't surprise me but there is a lot of operational security going on whether they've run away from milove to Beresov, i would doubt i would doubt that they've just suddenly done a, a you know um a, a route almost as as some of the sources are kind of claiming um, there was claim that Beroslav, the administration, uh, had moved out. Uh, but there's also claims that reinforcements are moving in as well. So as the administration moves out, the the military moves in to reinforce this area. There are going to be several lines of defence, and it could be that the first line has been broken. But this might also be wishful thinking on, on accounts of pro-Ukrainian sources. Again, what's the truth? Don't know. Don't know at the moment. Um, it could look a bit confusing like that as we are in the middle of, of this operational withdrawal that we're, I was talking about with regard to the Russian forces putting out. And we know that they are uh, putting out to some degree, but possibly putting in conscripts instead. Uh, and and Novokovka, this dam that's in Novokovka, has been hit by high That is definitely true. There have been some big old explosions uh, taking place there. Uh, over the last 24 hours so anyway it could be that we are starting to see the hotly anticipated offensive take place in Kherson um, maybe today uh, things might change uh, this may or may not be true what I've done here so that's very tentative and I'll probably move that back after the video what's also worth noting is that uh, and this is the same I think up in the uh, Svatovy uh, Kremlin area is that in Kherson, there's been fog and cloud cover. And when you get fog and cloud cover, it means that you are, it's really difficult to operate artillery and drone strikes and drone reconnaissance. And without and and also aerial strikes with, with jets. Um, so there's been there will have been a lack of uh, that kind of activity. Now, whether that supports better better supports the Ukrainians in offense or the Russians in defense is is up for debate but neither side will be able to operate those uavs uh, particularly well at the moment due to due to the weather 
Um, anyway, there you go. Things might be changing. It'll be interesting to see what the next 24, 48 hours, uh, what happens there. I will be doing my Ukraine war update extra video later with some extra nuggets. Thank you so much for bearing with me. And uh, my use of this map is quite difficult because I keep selecting on stuff. So do bear with me. I'll get better at using this uh, Google Earth map uh, to show how things do or don't change. Uh, if you want to support my channel, please hop down to the description, find out the ways you can do that, or you can pop along to uasupporter.com forward slash ATP. And if you grab yourself, I don't know, say a tote bag, then you will be giving my channel a tiny little bit of commission. So if you want to show your support for Ukraine, uh, there are loads of designs on there if that is your thing. Anyway, thank you so much. Take care and I'll speak to you later.